I still can't believe I went into the jungle. I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, the South African version with its all-star cast of former contestants, and I thought it's a show you watch, not a show you do. Yet I did do it, the original in Australia, in November 2022. I thought it would be super challenging, and in the spirit of Andy Warhol, I felt like I was jumping headfirst into pop culture. I love how Andy Warhol started modelling in his later years. No better time than now to be yourself. I also got paid well to do it, and I can't pretend that wasn't another good reason. With John Moss and his money-sucking lawsuit breathing down my neck, I felt like it was a gig I couldn't turn down. I kept my fears to myself, except for heights. I wasn't teetering on anything or jumping out of a helicopter. I made a promise to myself there'd be no Nelly screaming. Paul Burrell, she won't be. Maybe just a hint of Gillian McKeith, the odd well-rehearsed stage faint in front of a spitting snake. Remembering the whole time your brothers are watching, South East London is watching. I heard that on Big Brother there were hairdressers and makeup artists in the next room. Not the case on I'm a Celebrity, but you do go in thinking there'll be coffee breaks. When we first landed in the helicopter and started the long trek towards camp, reality TV star turned presenter Olivia Atwood was complaining. There must be an easy way to get into the camp. How's they get all the lights and cameras and equipment in here? They can't drag it all the way through here, can they? I thought to myself, Jesus, stop moaning, but she was right. There were easier ways to get into the camp. They wanted you to feel absolutely stranded. They made each of us get into separate jeeps with blacked out windows. It was the start of rituals to wind you up and get you rattled. The day I did my first trial on the beach in a suffocating water tank, I saw security give Olivia Atwood some food. I thought it was a chalk ice at first and I was a bit jealous, before I discovered Olivia was feeling unwell and needed a sugar pickup. It was a protein bar. We were only on day two and Olivia was being monitored carefully. The first task was a baptism of fire. I wasn't bothered about what I had to do, but I was bothered about being on TV in a wet t-shirt. I knew I had more to get over, but I just threw a dry towel over my shoulders and refused to take it off on camera. Can we lose the towel? No. I nailed that water task and I felt completely fearless. Moments before I was cursing everyone, I hated PK, I hated Ant and Deck and the universe. I tapped it out using EFT, chanting, I am fearless, I am confident, I am happy, I am strong. I would do these mantras every day, especially in the jungle, because I realised how much it was helping me. My spiritual practices in the camp were amplified and edited for comedy effect, though I didn't keep anyone awake. I wasn't noisy, but they taped what I was doing and played it back endlessly to make it look like that was all I did. I did my morning rituals in the treehouse, which was away from the camp. I did hear a loud bird squawking in the morning, and maybe my campmates thought the noise was coming from me. After being in isolation for several days prior to entering the jungle, I was taken on a speedboat for some pre-show filming. We were shooting the I'm a Celebrity opening sequence and doing the master interview. I had to try on my jungle uniform and I was terrified. I had cut up one of the hats and created a crown with the help of Ben Fletcher who runs my art studio. It had a bit of a Basquiat vibe, like a punk crown. We customised one of the shirts with big red polka dots. I wanted to customise everything, but that would have meant the show giving away too much power. You quickly realise that when they say, let's talk about it, they mean no. I get that the show is designed to make you crazy, but they should know you are already crazy when you step off the flight to Australia. I stepped off mine from Mexico wearing a lion's head. I bought it on the internet. I was told my code name for the jungle was lion, so I was being super subtle. An American fellow passenger was the only one to comment on my lion drag. He asked for a picture and of course I agreed. I knew how good I looked to Simba. I could just about see through the eyes of the mask and had to hold on to the strapping security guard so I didn't lose my Balenciaga. From Brisbane Airport we were driven to a posh suburb to stay in a safe house and went into isolation. I only found out that my DJ friend Chris Moores was also heading into the jungle just days before I flew out of London to join Coach Club for some American dates. My manager Tiffany has been living with Chris in London for several years and managed to keep the jungle news quiet. And yes, I can confirm they are more than friends. They have two blue cats and they are constantly refurbishing the house. This is what you get for dating a cancerian. 
Chris is a Pisces who has zero interest in star signs. 